Hi, this is Packin here, and uh, today I'm in my pajamas, and uh, I do most of my thinking during the night, and I sleep during the day. So uh, with me is a very special uh, desktop uh, workstation, and I'm sure that people have uh, problems with this kind of workstation. And what I have here is a rare treat. This was um, this was uh, found in um, <clears throat> the the trash bin, and uh, this is the HP XW eight thousand. So by looking at this machine, it's the only one of its kind. Um, one of the last of the best 32-bit uh, Xeon, dual Xeon processors. It's a socket 604, um, and also, it, again, it's a 32-bit architecture, and it can handle up to 80, uh, well, PC2100 ECC, um, 12 gigabytes of RAM. And it's very impressive, 12 gigs of RAM at its time. So... <clears throat> This is um, this is a beauty. Now, I know that there there are others out there on YouTube that has a problem with this machine, and and one of the problems is that when you turn it on, when you turn it on, it will give you this obnoxious beeping noise, meaning that they would have you know three consecutive beeps and then a beep after that. Um, I don't really pay attention about what the beeps mean. Um, I do what every tech, you know, would do is that we would look at the motherboard. We would actually take out all the components. I did took out all the components. You had to take everything out. The mother, the power, the power uh, that goes to the motherboard, the peripherals, the the power that goes to peripherals, remove every cable from the power supply, remove all the ribbon cables from the motherboard. So what I do is that I inspect each of the board to see if there are any burnt capacitors or burnt IC chips or burnt chips. And as far as I can see and review, um, it doesn't. I don't have any burnt chips. Now keep in mind that when I was working on this, I do have that beeping noise, so I was able to solve it, and I hope that this video is gonna help you guys solve this problem. So, while you check out every component with with this, um, you know, check if there's any burnt capacitors or burnt IC chips, what you do next is that you move the RAM modules and I forgot to mention that was the first part. You had to remove all the RAM modules, remove everything. The board has to be lay flat. So you won't see anything. Um, and then you plug everything back in. Um, the next part is that you would install the RAM only on the right side because the right side is where the dim slots ones are. So it's dim slot one, dim slot two, dim slot three. So you always put it on this side. All right, so you put the RAM on the board. You're not ready to turn it on yet. Change the CMOS battery. Most of the time that it would pick up that the CMOS battery is bad, change the CMOS. Um, it's a CR2032 um, button cell lithium ion battery. You just get it from anywhere. You can get it from a dollar store. Um, you, you pick one up and you install it. Okay, so you have your RAM, you have your battery, you have your CPU, make sure you have your CPU installed. Alright, so CPU is installed, the RAM, the, the CMOS battery placed. Um, you also have to check this button. And you want to make sure that this button right here, the power button, doesn't stick because when you press it, Sometimes when, when it sticks, you would have the beeping noise. So make sure you try to clean it, or when you press it, 
you would realize that you would see this, uh, you know, stick into this button. Um, try to pull it out with a nail or something so it doesn't stick into the power and it would cause this beeping noise. Um, so once that, once that is done, you install the power, the power supply cables, everything back in. The hard drive, the peripheral, you install it, to, you install the power supply to the motherboard, you install it to here, um, which is the, the, the optical drives and your hard drives. Everything that you need to make sure you're plugged in. And also, like I said, the board and everything is replaced. And then what you get is that you should be able to have a fully functioning machine. So let me give you a test. Um, I'm actually doing this in the floor because uh, my table is a mess. As you can see, I was working on laptops. And this is my little workstation. I have my helping hands and I was do some soldering work. All right, so this wire, okay, this what this. Actually, do not, do not connect this one yet because as soon as you connect it, this is a continuous power supply. That thing's a 450 watt that's continuous, so do not plug it in yet. Uh, make sure you put in your, uh, your adapter. This one, this card, is a 6101 gigabyte it ha it is a direct x11 i believe it is the fastest pci card um made that i've known that's current this is 2015 so finding this kind of card is very difficult this is a sparkle um geforce gt610 and it's a one gigabyte card um, I like this card because it has DVI, HDMI, and VGA. So this is, this machine, it, again, it's a 32-bit machine. It's the one of it, it's the last of its kind, and anything can happen. I, I can really, I could do anything I want on it. Maybe play old retro games because it's faster than P4s. So it's not 64. So there you go. Yeah, you install DVI. Then install the the keyboard. Okay, and uh, the power cord now plugs in. See how it's green? There. Now it receives power. All right. Make sure you. Uh, don't, don't uh, make sure you ground yourself. If you don't have a ground, make sure your fingers are touching the metal, not the electric, so you can uh, deground yourself. All right, so there you go. This is my keyboard. What's great about this keyboard is that it has a nub. So it's a keyboard mouse, great for testing. So I'm gonna turn it on. Press this button. Watch it roll. Oh, it sticks, so you want to make sure that you don't want to. There you go. There you go. That's you should turn on. There you go. Works. Um, it has Windows XP. I'm going to be erasing that roughly soon. Um, yeah. Let me, uh, let me see if I can get to the BIOS. Oh, that was too late. It's Windows XP. But as you can see, it works. Uh, no more beeping noise. Uh, as long as you follow this, method you're able to uh, get this machine up and running and uh, and start playing some old retro games so you could play on your 32-bit and that you can't play on your 64 um, you know I, I know that this I know that this um, new generations that they come with 64-bit processors and you know kind of miss out one what's going on with the 32 right the 32 is being thrown away 
um, you know, this kind of beauty, I just can't pass up because, I mean, 12 gigs with the dual Xeon, dual Xeon processor. I can get this up to 3.2 gigahertz, which I'm planning on getting. It's a Xeon uh, socket 604. I'm planning on getting dual 3.2 gigahertz CPUs. Um, so I'm gonna get that upgraded. Um, these are two 2.8s. Uh, these are one gigs. So these are gonna be maxed out to 12 gigs. So 12 gigs and and 3.0, 3.2, and you get six something gigahertz. It's freaking cr really freaking crazy. 